Thanks, Andy. I'm going to pour a couple of these. I'm going to start. With... <laughs> oh, we've got, who's got the flicker? Do I start? <laughs> no, you can start. We're yeah, so organised. We'll bring this down to earth. <laughs> um, the analysis we do is sort of gut analysis. So, uh, gut analysis. We'll uh, show you a bit of that. Um, what I really liked is that 73%. I don't know who showed us that. That's 73%. I don't want to be one of those brands that's 73%, so we've got some work to do. Um, essentially, when we start a talk, we just um, do a little survey. Has anyone heard of Blunt Umbrellas? That's well, can you just hold good. it? I'm going to take a photo of that. We're can, can we? <laughs> no, no. We've got a bet going on in the office about how many people know about it. I'm so saying Josh is not doing his job properly, but this is actually okay. So hands up um, if you know of Blunt Umbrellas. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's on the okay, program. Who, who knew that Who's, who, on the program? Who has a blunt umbrella? Awesome. Okay. Serious? Okay, that's good. He's still got a job. <laughs> um, how does this thing work? Push that right arrow, I'm guessing. Okay. Um, let's work as that one. Uh, what, how, why? Basically, there is three of us. There's uh, Greg, Josh, and myself. Um, Greg usually comes along and gives the what. I do the how, and Josh sort of ends with a Y, and um, basically we've given this talk a few times and haven't got any better at it, but um, we're in Malaysia recently and we, we um, were launching there and we went to this, um, they have this conference and we'd, we'd been invited along as the international guest speakers, which we don't know why, they were desperate, <laughs> and um, they had these, we arrived and they had these 40, 50 foot banners, and this is Greg and I, and there's a picture of myself on one of these banners and a picture of Greg on them, and we're going, we look at each other and go, we should have prepared. And, and then, then we walk in, and then um, the MC, they, they love <laughs> MCing over there, and he, went for, he had about a five minute slot and went for about 25 minutes. So our 45 minutes reduced to about 20 minutes, which was quite good. And then it was English as a second language. So we just started speaking quite slowly and telling the story. And then someone afterwards comes up and says, you New Zealanders speak really slow. <laughs> right. So we've got 12 minutes, 47, and this is about a 45 minutes talk. Um, this essentially is our timeline of, of, of the company. Um, Greg started in 1999, I came on board 2004 with him, we co-founded it, and um, we expected to be millionaires in 2006, so we learnt our first thing, which is basically things take a lot longer than you expect. Um, we had this 2004 to 2009 part-time period where we were just um, working out of kitchen tables and out of garages and stuff like that, uh, trying to validate the whole, the whole purpose of what we're doing. Um, this was the aim, right? That's, that's Greg. Yeah, this is, this is it's essentially what I say is you, you don't, wait. why do we do what we do? Why umbrellas? Um, you don't wake up in the morning going, this is what I'm going to do. You didn't go to university and say, hey, look, I want to sit on the side of the road selling umbrellas. But um, what we then decide to, um, this is really, we had to think about why we do this. Um, so this is it, really. Uh, for us, it's, it's a big opportunity. It's an opportunity for a whole host of reasons, and one of them is really we can make our own little difference in the world in one segment, right? So there is a big problem with umbrellas, and, and the, we've created a, a product that can actually, you know, give us an opportunity to fix, it, fix the solution, and also um, it, it also just gives us an opportunity to create a business that's got some meaning. Um, it's about a journey. We do go to lots of places, and it's about a journey in our development as well. This is a key one. It's being disruptive, right? So there's no point, when we give a few talks, there's no point trying to become a Me Too product, really. If you've got a disruptive product and you can make a change, then it's a much better position to be. Um, having a meaning, this is a big one. I mean, obviously, everyone here, it's about having a meaning, but um, putting a meaning on why we're an umbrella salesman and things like that. So um, hopefully, we'll get to that too. And it's also a legacy, because we've all got families and that, and you don't want your kids sort of saying, Dad, what do you do, and you tell them all the bad stuff. But it's, it's about trying to give them this bigger picture and say, hey, look, go, go to work and, and leave something good behind. These are a few of the um, companies that we sort of aspire to, and um, one of my favourite ones is Tom's, and I, I've got loads of Tom's shoes, and um, they're not actually that good, they're not that comfortable, and... Um, <laughs> I've spent lots of time walking around and, and wishing I wasn't wearing them, but the reality is <laughs> when, I, when I buy them, it makes me feel really good, and they're one of the original one for one, and it's, it's a really good example of, um, sustain, of, of having a real good meaning to a business because product's not so great, but the meaning behind it is fantastic, and it actually can turn into um, a lot of value too because he recently sold his company to Bain Capital, half of it, for $300-plus million or something, so you can make money out of this thing. 
you know, here's a what, I'll let um, Greg, I mean, Josh, Josh really yeah, usually Greg. So cool, yeah, I'm gonna do a, bit of a, a little bit of a quick about the what for those three people that didn't know what we sell. It's, a, it's an umbrella, um, that's a, a visual represent, representation of uh, Greg's dad's garage where he sort of grew up and, and tinkered as a little kid, he was always inventing things. But the, the story goes that he was um, in the UK and inspired by this guy, James Dyson, who um, took a, a kind of pretty ordinary, boring product and decided to make it work in a way that it probably always should have. Um, there's a whole technical challenge around that. Uh, the price point makes it a whole kind of a different um, kind of beast when it comes to selling it, but it was a sort of hard sort of nut that he kind of wanted to crack. And uh, Greg read his book back in the early days, and Greg's got one of the sort of early versions of the dice, and he kind of, and, and loves that story. So that was kind of a lot of the inspiration for, um, for Greg to get on and, and try something. So Greg's about six foot three or something, or I don't know, six foot eight, he's really tall. Um, and he was living in London at the time and, and walking through the streets um, and being so tall, as soon as there's a, a, um, a deluge of rain, all these umbrellas pop up at eye level to him. Um, and that was kind of his, his sort of, um, his light bulb moment, I guess, to think, here's something that's actually fundamentally flawed, this umbrella with these, these spikes at eye level. That's, that's seriously dangerous. So he sort of got about kind of working out what he could do to try and make fix that problem about the blunt tips. But in the process kind of realized that actually it highlighted a whole lot of stuff that everyone became used to, which was this um, brokenness of our umbrellas. Why is that not working? There we go. Um, that actually most of the umbrellas just end up in the bins anyway. Uh, so he's got this kind of, this, this tension then about how to create, how to fix this problem with these spiky tips, but actually then trying to really solve the problem of the actual umbrella. Uh, as a tool in itself. So he actually literally got down to the local store and bought, went to a kite shop and bought some bits and pieces and went to Marks and Spencer and got some bits and bobs and a, and a sewing machine and got together and, and started sort of making some prototypes. And he went through this process, I'll quickly run through that it, he had an idea and he'd have a long build process, it would fail, he'd get frustrated, then he'd get inspired by something else and then he'd have another idea. And this went round and round for a long time, pretty far too long, he's not that <laughs> quick, it's taken years, but it was 99 he first conceptualized it. Um, but he kind of realized that there's all sorts of funny, radical, weird ideas out there. And he, he, some of these early prototypes he's got in his shed are, are kind of crazy. Um, that's not one of his, but that's an example of, of thinking outside the square. So he realized at that point, he kind of had to go back to the basics and say what was actually really good about the traditional umbrella. So there's this whole kind of element of being disruptive, but not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And saying, okay, actually, an umbrella still needs to be a, an obvious thing to use. Um, so he kind of went through this process, how many slides have we got here? Um, and, actually, and then, long story short, comes up with a solution of, of this umbrella here, which has blunt tips. It's got a whole lot of technology in the frame, which opens it out, and I won't bore you too much um, with exactly how it works, but essentially, as the diagram um, shows, it creates an aerodynamic profile. It's a really tensioned canopy, so the wind hits it and slides across, rather than hitting it, folding it, and collapsing it. Uh, there's a little video, hopefully, we'll play here. Or not. Yes. So this is a quick test at our, our factory. There's about an 80 km an hour wind blasting out of the fan to the right there. That's Captain Haddock. <laughs> yeah. So you can see what's kind of quite, quite resting with the wind there, and, and that's kind of the ultimate solution of, of, of how the umbrella works in, in its wind. Uh, most umbrellas break at about 20k, so um, I'm going to go back me. to you about how. Yeah. Um, I just want to yeah, retouch on a, a couple of things. We, we've, we've really got no time for this talk, so I'm just going to go to the, the bullet points without even going through this. Um, we gave a talk at the Auckland Business School just the other day, and a couple of the key things that came out of the, um, all the different speakers was um, one was... Um, be aware of opportunities, and there's heaps and heaps of opportunities around there, so just keep your eyes open. If you're observing the world, you actually will be able to see them. Um, relationships was another one everyone touched on. Um, it's all about relationships, and, and that's one of our key things. It's, um, we, we, we manufacture up in China, the best factory. Um, it, it's, we have this relationship with the, the factory owner that's, um, we've gone on there on holidays, he's come over to New Zealand on holidays, and we've gone over there, and we've never, ever, ever talked about price. We don't have a contract. Um, this guy holds about 40, 50,000 units worth of stock for us. Um, we could walk away, he'd be left holding it, um, but um, everyone trusts each other. So 
I usually get told off when I say don't have a contract and that, but um, <laughs> that's how we operate, really. It's just um, on relationships. Another one was being disruptive, which we've talked about. The other thing about disruptive, a disruptive product, it allows you to price point yourself uh, in a different category. If you're um, a, a product that you're just competing on price, it's, it's not a good space to be. So being disruptive is a nice space to be. Perseverance, obviously, um, and knowing your metrics. This one came out quite a bit. Um, and it's understanding, I think you're talking about this, it's where, where you put your effort in. Uh, again, for us, just our industry, it's an umbrella, and you go, well, there's not too many of them, but there's about a billion and a half of them produced a year. Japan alone, every day, throws out 143,000 umbrellas. We've um, worked out. So there's a, there's a massive problem. Um, so this is really... What, what we've found in the industry is that 10%, and this is just a way of showing it, up to 10%, it's actually up to 14%, we've heard, or 15% of umbrellas leaving the factory can already be broken, right? And that's just a massive, massive waste of resource. And um, the, the people receiving them, the, the, um, the distributors that are not flying over to um, Europe and um, gone and seen these warehouses of two, three million umbrellas at a time, and... Um, when we went over to these warehouses, we were, um, we, I'd, I'd walk in there and I was saying to Greg, look, they're gonna wine and dine us, they're gonna love us, because we are truly the most innovative product for about 100 years in the umbrella industry. Um, a, and it really works, and I thought these guys are just gonna jump all over us. And they did wine and dine us and that, and then we left, and not one of them ever talked to us again, not one of them ever contacted us, and I was just sitting there scratching my head going, what, why is this? But this is the reason, because these guys operate in this sort of, um, these sort of scenarios where Within six months or so, 90% of, of the umbrellas that they've sold will be broken, and then they'll be getting these repeat sales and repeat sales. So that's the industry we're operating. So, so for us, this is a really, I mean, this was a problem. And um, the good thing about this is um, we identified it was a problem. That's great. We've got a solution. But we realized that our business model is not the same as their business model. So we're going to have to um, really think things through differently. Uh, three minutes. Um, low price, low quality. Yep, well, we've talked Good about price. that, Me Too. Yep, you don't want to be a Me Too product, all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to quickly fly through these because... So when we, went to, um, when we went to Europe, we were chasing the royalty route, which is basically we were going to license <coughs> our product to them. And um, so that was another thing we mentioned is that um, really, really sit down and think about how your business fits in with other people's businesses. And we didn't do that initially. So we came back at um, 1999 after we'd had our money in that, and we had to go this route, which was really good for us in the fact that um, we were originally following that red line, which is a patent. So our, our value was going to diminish over time, but by putting a brand with the, um, with the patent, it gives it a lot more power. So it, as a product, that was great for us, but in the time, in 2009, it was horrible to actually be uh, rejected by all these people, but um, it's worked out well. Um, there's another story, same, same, but different. Yeah, Can we go on forever, or have we got two minutes? <laughs> eight minutes. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's the other thing is about perseverance. Is um, we we have the technology. This this product. This basically since 1999 we've perfected it. It's, it works. We continually evolve it. We've got a slight kaizen approach and making it better and better. But um, essentially we have the same same but different slide. Where we go. I was going to one of our largest customers now, Smith and Co's, and I remember going into them and I, I was talking about the umbrella and I said, this technology is fantastic, it's amazing, it's great, everything like that, so, um, you should buy it, it's this price, you're going to make X amount of money. And they were like, nah. Um, then I go back the next year to the same buyer and I go, hey, look, we've still got this amazing umbrella, it's the best umbrella in the world. And they were like, no. And then, sorry, that's, oh, turn that off. <laughs> that was Greg. And... Um, <laughs> Then the third year I went in and I said, hey, look, we've got this great umbrella. And he stopped me. He just said, y y yep, we'll take it. And I was like, well, what's different? And basically what was different is we'd put some story around our product and right. we'd had a lot of um, people talking about it. So, so no Greg's um, ringing me. What's that? <laughs> no Greg's ringing me. Yeah. And um, it, it essentially what we'd gone out is we'd made a lot of noise. So in the early, and, and we'd put a story that people could relate to. So Smith, Smith and Coe's came along and they're, they're pretty much one of our largest customers in New Zealand now. And they love us, and we, we take up a small section of their, their store, and we're, we're real high value for them. So what we've done is, and this is a whole brand versus product sort of thing, is which of the, I mean, probably not the best example, but um, the one's branded, and Josh just turned the logo a little bit, and one has, you know, you'd probably buy, and one you'd look at and go, maybe I wouldn't buy. So it's just an example there. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> lied, we need you to wrap up. Okay. <laughs> so really quickly, 
Um, this is our mission. Let's throw away the throwaway culture. Um, or, the, or the one minute rundown, one on, minute the, rundown. on the visuals. It's like being in Malaysia again. We're rushed. Okay, I'm going to skip, 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 skip. So basically, we come from New Zealand, and we realize we're super proud of that. So this is sort of cutting straight to the chase about a new sort of... Um, We've talked around all the different features and benefits of the umbrella and why we did it and Greg's story from back in the day and all these amazing kind of things, but we've kind of come to the conclusion that actually we just need to fix this one thing right. Our mission is to replace all the shitty umbrellas in the world with good umbrellas because that's a general thing. So Blunt has solved the problem of the umbrella and we're inviting our, our retailers, we're inviting our customers and, and consumers uh, to be part of the solution. So our new imagery, this is taken down in Queenstown, we had a great photo shoot down there recently, um, and we're highlighting the, the bits that are a bit jarring to, to the eye. And it's a common sight that we've become used to, but when you see it in environments like this, it's a bit of a challenge. So these are posters that will appear in stores and at point of sale and that kind of stuff. So this is the invitation to sort of come on the journey with us. And there's lots of stories we haven't got time for, but the, uh, how people actually are kind of becoming a little bit a bit crazy. I mean, it is just an umbrella, but there is kind of a, a little bit of a club that sort of forms around, oh my gosh, I've got this umbrella, we get emails, I bought the umbrella, I can't wait for it to rain. It's like, seriously, it's an umbrella. <laughs> but but it's, it genuinely is happening. So to be kind of part of something that's more important than just a boring business, I think, which is this whole authenticity thing. Again, back getting New Zealand into that vision, we love this sort of background scenery. It translates awesomely globally with the clean green image we have, which hopefully we can hang on to. Um, this is just a bit about identity, which isn't really relevant today. Um, our blunt tips, obviously. And then, oh, that's the one we want. That, we'll finish with this, because I think we're done. If we can just play this last video, and then we'll get out of your hair. This is our plug. There's no sound. That's OK. Imagine a nice soundtrack. There is sound. You can um, give this away at the end of the day. Oh, you can find a spot for us on a question. Now, obviously, there's those stories with the guys, and you, you'll be seeing them throughout the day. I would just say, you know that moment when you, when, like, you know, hand dryers in the toilet? I, when they, they Dyson redesigned them for the air blade thing, and you come out, and I came out the first toilet, it was actually at Auckland train station when I did it, and I was like, mm, yeah. and I went out, and I went like this, and I went, oh, my hands are actually dry. <laughs> and I was like, what have we been putting up with for like 20 years? The hair dryers are shit, so they don't actually work. And it's the, same, it's the same experience with Blunt, where you first put one up and go, oh, that's what an umbrella's supposed to do. What have we been doing for yeah. years? So, I mean, when you, build, you can build purpose and brand on, on the basis of, a, of an amazing design. It really, really helps. But they've done an amazing job in getting this far. So, 